another episode of All Things Ghostly. I am Abby. Nice to meet you if you've never been here before, and welcome back if you have. Um, today we are going to be talking about some haunted dreams, um, or dreams that are just very unsettling. Um, this is like a classic ghost story episode, um, except it's dream themed. I love these ones. Um, I think it was in our first episode of like the ghost story, um, type episode that a lot of those had dream themes to them, but this one is definitely all about dreams. So we have several here. Um, all of these are from Reddit. I will go ahead and shout out like the user of which, um, posted this of who posted it. Um, but yeah, I'm super excited to dig into these because they seem very crazy from what I've read thus far. So, um, the first one is called a skeletal scare and it is by user taco cats underscore five. Um, okay, so it says, I almost never get nightmares, and when I do, it's weird. They're not quite nightmares, but not regular dreams either. They don't make me super scared, but in my dreams, I mostly just have anxiety or something, or I'm just worried, not really terrified or anything. This was the most clearly remembered dream I've had in a while. I'm actually writing this a little bit after I woke up, so I don't forget anything. As I heard that doing that is good to practice lucid dreaming, but what do I know? The dream opens with me hearing a recording, just a recording, no visuals, of a man with a thick accent, which I don't know of, thanking a woman for saving him and his daughter. I think I'm listening to this recording on the news. After he's done thanking the woman profusely, he begins to describe what happened to him. He says that while he was out in the grassy fields at night, he saw something in the sky that made his heart stop. He begins to describe what he saw, and ha as he describes it, a picture comes up on screen. Five skeletons glowing red with a red aura around them are all standing close to each other in a circle in the sky about 100 feet up, and each putting one of their hands in a center as if to a as if about to do a cheer. He also describes the skeleton as being dead. Well, obviously. Would skeletons be alive? It's just bones. The man says that after that, he doesn't remember what happened and he believes he blacked out. Cut to me and my family walking on a road in the middle of the night in a random area. And for whatever reason, I walk out on my own and go by myself walking to some random area in a road next to a grassy clearing surrounded by trees. I walk further into the clearing before I see something way up high into the air. In the air above me, there were a bunch of red and glowing skeletons with a red aura around them. I recognized this from what I saw in the news, but I wasn't afraid. I was instead intrigued. I walked closer to the beings, or the dead as the man called them, while at the same time keeping my distance. I stopped. They looked like they were doing some something or about to do something. The skeletons went closer to each other before doing the same that the man from the news report said. The skeletons began making a tight circle as they were floating in the air, and they all put one hand in the center, either over the top or under another hand. All of their hands lowered before they shot their hand into the air, along with their bodies that were suddenly moving up and away from the center. It would have been almost beautiful to look at if all heck didn't break loose. Suddenly, from out of nowhere, as the skeletons were floating fast up and away from each other, beams made of fire bigger than a person are suddenly moving away from the skeletons and other random directions in the sky and moving in a zigzag pattern as if to find something that isn't there. Imagine dark seeds, omega beams. <laughs> I don't know what that is, but that's what they said. It was a like kind of looked like um but just way bigger and about the size of a person and are made of fire instead of energy so whatever that's from that's a visual um as the beams of white hot fire are shooting in every which direction past me i am shielding myself from the wind and the debris when either the initial shock wave of the beam shooting out are only just now getting to me or a beam lands on the ground near me and i am blown back and sent tumbling backwards on the landscape i tumble back to the road i was originally walking on and as i stop moving i immediately start looking for cover there are some trees and bushes in front of the road and to the right just in front of me and i go into them. I run through the trees trying to find a big bush enough to hide in until I notice something. Outside the tree I'm in, there is this big beast thing that almost looks like a giant tiger that is stalking the edge of the trees looking for something. I knew then that a bush wasn't going to cut it, so I tried to find a tree to climb. I start climbing the tree and am 
and am past halfway up the whole tree when I stop and look down. The beast is looking all across the ground before it looked up. It looks up and straight at me. It sees me. But something that big can't be able to climb trees. The thing is twice the size of a bear after all. It looks like I was right because the beast turns around and walks away. I look up and I see the skeletons again. They're more scattered but still close to each other. They might be talking to each other. Now that they're not clumped together, moving around, and there's no general chaos going on, I can count seven, seven of them rather than the five that, I, that the other man saw. I think about taking a picture of this with my phone as I look at the skeletons that are looking around, seemingly looking for something. Just as I am about to go ahead and get my phone to take a picture, I hear shouting off to my left and down. As I look, I can see my family in the distance on the road calling my name. They are saying that it's time to go home and something along the lines of get down from there. I decided that I would first get a quick picture of the skeletons and then would make my way down. When I see the skeletons again, I see that one of them is looking in my direction with no eyes and only eye sockets. Skeletons don't normally have eyes, so I feel like that's pretty fair to envision. I can't really see exactly what they were looking at, although from this distance, I doubt I would be able to see even if they did have eyes. Ha, huh, it has to just be looking in my general direction, right? There's no way it can actually see me. Another skeleton next to it joins the other and looking in my direction. Okay, maybe they do see me. I make the wise decision to not waste time taking any pictures and jump down the tree and onto the ground. No fall damage, IDK, I just kinda slowly float downwards when I jump down, it's weird. That's amazing. Would love to do that in real life. Um, I stand there for a second trying to decide where to go. If I run into my family, we can get our we can get to our car and escape. However, I run the risk of leading the skeletons to my family if I go to them. I consider running away in a random direction, although being home right now does sound good. As I'm trying to decide what to do, the dream starts to slowly fade and distort um, as awareness comes back to me and I wake up, my heart beating faster than normal. I feel like dreams always end exactly where they're not supposed to end, um, and they always like to leave you on a little cliffhanger. Um, but yeah, that's definitely pretty um, scary. Uh, glowing red skeletons. I would probably be very afraid of that as well, to be fair. Um, but spooky in like a strange way, but not in a paranormal way. So I hope some of these are very paranormally. Um, but we'll see. Again, I don't really read these ahead of time. I just make sure that they're, you know, decent looking stories um, so that I can get my authentic reaction. Um, okay, so the second story is by Voyaging Vulture and it is called A Really Spooky But Kind of Fun Dream. Really strange. It says dot 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 really strange. So I figured I'd throw this one in there because it says kind of fun. So... Uh, the first part of this dream was me watching a wealthy bachelor in his 40s arrive at his suburban neighbor's house to visit a young boy, his friend named Kyle. Well, he would chat with Kyle, who was like 11 or 12, and then leave to return home, but he stood for a long while, talking about his fiance that she ended up passing away, but he still loves her very much. Why is a man in his 40s, like, really good friends with an 11 or 12 year old? I guess maybe in like a fatherly or like grandpa type of way, but they're talking about his fiance that's tiful um something then felt off and he checked downstairs while his neighbors seemed to look distressed he tried to comfort them but they only seemed to be ignoring him he then saw his neighbor or a vision of his neighbor toss a paper into his manor's grassy lawn which had the front article read, well-known bachelor killed in street collision with his photo on the front he loosened his caravat I don't know what that is Cravat? Cravat? I don't know what that is. Um, and appeared pale, going back upstairs to see Kyle. He asked Kyle if he had left his house. Kyle said yes, but he's glad to see him back here even if he kind of looks dead. Pardon? Is this a zombie situation? Um, he looked out the second floor window at the street where the accident took place and clutched his chest a bit nervously telling Kyle, well, this is very odd. I could have sworn I hadn't even stepped foot outside your door yet, and it appears I left. Not only left your street, but well, left left. Kyle told him, yeah, you don't look so good. Is your head okay? <laughs> no, his head is not okay. The man then realized his head sometimes failed to turn around because his neck was broken in death. 
and he fixed it with some embarrassment very casual he told kyle that his parents and the other adults didn't seem to see him but it was strange that he could kyle just shrugged and asked well where are you gonna go now there's a birthday party for my auntie downstairs and i don't feel like going wish i could stay and talk but maybe you should try going home too there's nothing to stop you now and he goes, I suppose you're right. Perhaps now I might find my fiance. Oh, I'd give anything to dance with her again. That's so sweet. And she was so beautiful when she was buried. I can only hope the same went for me. I did spare no expense. With that, he gave a laugh and Kyle walked with him through the party and to the door where he let him out and waved goodbye. His parents were like, who are you talking to? And Kyle just said he was playing a game and ran back upstairs. The second part of this dream involved me waking up tired as usual but in a bed in a room in a home that was way nicer than my own next to my husband I don't have oh, those dreams are lovely um I woke up to some noise like a music and a party in the distance um, I rubbed my eyes and just got up to see what was going on in the garden out the window and there was this fancy party happening in our property I thought what's going on I look at the time and it's 2 a.m I walk over to a mirror with a sigh and noticed I look very pale and quite dead, like I can barely see my eyes in the dark sockets and my teeth seemed to show through my skin. I was afraid at first, though a knock on the door came and startled me. I went over and opened it, and in walked this beautiful lady in a cocktail dress, very pale and with acorn brown hair, red lipstick, and rouge on. I love rouge, not blush, rouge. This microphone is too high and my posture cannot stay up enough. Uh, she asked what I was doing still in bed with a British accent. Um, that there was a celebration to be had. I didn't understand and asked her why and who she was. She told me I was no longer living and that I had been forgotten too long, but now I have my whole afterlife to celebrate. She told me to hurry and get dressed and put my face on so I can join the party. I asked what about whatever my husband's name was. And she said he's still sleeping and that he'll be along soon and not to worry. So I go to the closet, pick out something nice I could wear with her guidance and turn around. She applauded me and complimented my look before surrounding me in her arms in a rather soft hug. She told me, you couldn't possibly know how proud I am of you. You little thing, I'm almost jealous. But my fiance simply won't let me feel the slightest bit of envy. She gave me a little chuckle and let go walking to the mirror and setting some makeup out for me. I realized she was the bachelor's fiance. Oh, I understand now. And he was probably at the party. Was this the same like party that the kid was hosting or something? Um, maybe not though, because these people are dead. Anyway, uh, she was really pretty, as he said, though I wonder for her to just be pale how she even died, even more so how I died. With her help, she made my face look magically better and less a fright but still kind of dead with dark eyeliner to complement the dark sockets. I asked how I died, to which she said, doesn't matter or doesn't much matter how dear what matters is that you're here now and that you feel welcomed to a degree she was right and i was a little excited to be there it was like a death day party i got to see myself put on eyeliner while she brushed my hair behind me and then the dream ended and i woke up kind of reminded me of the mov movie beetlejuice though i haven't seen it in a while hmm that is very strange for sure i mean definitely I feel like anybody would be a little bit freaked out dreaming about death because it dreams are some people take dreams very literally to mean like a prediction of something um and again I think that that's all up to interpretation of what your current situation is but um I've said this in a video before but my mom has very intricate dreams and I do as well but hers are more like catered to what her real life is Whereas mine are just like batshit crazy, like pulling stories out of my ass type of dreams. Um, they just, they're very, very strange. Like last night, I literally had this dream that I was in Barcelona with a friend. Why Barcelona? I don't know. Don't think about Barcelona often, but there we go. She accidentally booked her flight a day before mine back home and I was afraid to fly alone so I was stuck in Barcelona for a night by myself and I went to a bowling alley uh, because I made one of my other friends fly out to Barcelona to fly home with me for the next day so while I was waiting for her um, I was at a bowling alley 
what are my dreams? Couldn't tell you. But anyway, um, yeah, all in all, dreams are weird. So uh, they're very interesting to hear other people's dreams because mine are just crazy. I don't dream about death often, though, or anything spooky. I have a couple of times in my life, more so when I was a kid, but now they're kind of just like craziness. Um, so the next one is by ok-friendship-8127 and it's called Nightmares Haunting Me in Waking Life. Hello, I've been having a series of nightmares for a decade now. I don't know who to turn to or what to even make of this chaos. If anyone can give me any input or advice as to what to do next, I would be forever grateful. This is going to be a long one, so I apologize in advance and thank you for even taking the time to read this. Um, so it says dream one, so I'm assuming, yeah, there's multiple dreams in this one. The first dream I clearly remember when I was around 13 or 14. In this dream, I awaken in the living room of my mother's house. I was living there at the time and seeing two people I don't recognize looking nervously toward the doorway to the kitchen then to me. One a woman, one a man. The man notices that I've awakened and thank God, thanks God before telling me that I have to get out of there before the monster comes back. The woman helps me up and hugs me tightly before that monster enters the doorway. A man about six foot tall, slim build, black hair slicked back, piercing green eyes that nearly glowed from the lighting in the room, he stares directly at me, smiling. Such a peaceful smile paired with eyes that made my blood run cold. Um, he goes to the man who gave me the warning and starts literally dragging this man away from us. The man screaming and trying to fight back, but to no avail. The woman looks terrified and tightens the hug on me another man walks through the doorway and rips her away from me before grabbing my arm and pulling me to the front of the porch or pulling me to the front porch the man had a strong build to him hair past his shoulders brown eyes taller than the first man and an annoyed expression rested on his face permanently he shoved me after i got past the front door i scoop myself away from him as much as i can but end up backed in the corner of the porch closed in porch a uh, deep freezer to the left of me he approaches me, telling me I shouldn't have come back. I scoot to my right and feel something move in my pocket. Sliding in my hand into the pocket, I feel a knife. Stabbing the tip of my danger... Danger? <laughs> Stabbing the tip of my finger in the process. Um, the man gets closer and I pull the knife out and stab him in the neck okay, you go, and again and again and again. I kept stabbing until I, ooh, diced his neck into pieces. This is gross. Um, he drops dead when I finally see how much blood uh, covered my arms. I dropped the knife and started having a panic attack until the woman comes running uh, to the front porch. She takes my hand and tells me that we have to run while we have the chance. I bust through the door to the outside and run and then i woke up still physically shaking and visibly sweating i checked the living room and front porch afterward because the dream felt so real that has happened to me a couple of times in my life um not a ton but you know sometimes and it feel it's the most real feeling of dreams i feel like because you have a an actual physical reaction to them and i'm a big like night tosser and turner as well and like for an example last night the the flight dream that i just talked about i could tell that i was very anxious in it because i woke up to my neck literally like strained so much and i could tell that i was having physical reactions of anxiety in my sleep um and again those are the dreams that always feel the realest when your your physical body has a reaction because of them um so the second dream this person has, um, it says the next dream takes place picking up right where the first one left off. So these were in different nights, but the same story maybe? Hmm. I don't know. Anyway, the woman and I are running down a trail past dirt past a dirt mound. We're cutting through the woods to get to the closest town. We run out of breath and hide in a group of trees near a creek. I asked her what happened to the guy that was with us and she shakes her head. She starts repeating they got him over and over. I throw my hand over her mouth when I hear a crunching sound approaching us. We sit in silence hoping the, uh, the sound goes past us. I reach into my pocket for the knife but it wasn't there. I had left it on the front porch in my panicked state. The sound gets closer and closer before we hear someone yelling, where are you bastards? Which one of you killed him? The woman takes my arms and smears the blood onto her arms before shoving my arms into the creek. She mouths, keep running and emerges from the trees. I peek through the opening and see the same man 
that first walked through the doorway, a wild look in his eyes, his chest, hands, and arms covered in blood. He raises a baseball bat and I start running before I can see the end result. I hear her screams as I'm running. I hear the thud of each hit. I keep running. I hear him yelling, you can't escape Morningstar. I break through the woods and near a cemetery. I decide to follow along the woods around it to stay out of plain sight. I see a public road ahead of me and a car in the distance driving closer. I run onto the road waving my arms as the car gets even closer. I wake up before the car gets to me. Now on to dream three, and it says, this one doesn't pick up from anywhere and was a dream that I had at least 10 times between the ages of 16 to 23. I'm 24 now. I'm being chased. Yes, I know. Not another chase, chase dream, boo, which I'm like, I feel like a lot of people have dreams where they're being chased, but go off. Um, but I'm being chased. I don't know what is chasing me, but I'm terrified. I get tripped up by hands that are rising from the ground, but not human or animal hands, some kind of dark green spectral hands. Maybe a zombie? I don't know. I feel like zombies are traditionally green. <laughs> they hold me in place as I finally see what was chasing me. The same man with slicked black hair and piercing green eyes. He doesn't speak English this time, and I've not even the slightest hint as to what language it could have been. The voice gets higher pitch and starts to sound like screeching. I don't know if he's speaking words at this point. I see a plus form on his nose before the skin just rips open and peels back, revealing a skull that resembles one of a wolf. The skull keeps pushing through, blood spraying all over me. This is gruesome. Um, I lower my head to not be blinded by blood in my eyes and see bones pushing through his fingers, bones pushing through his knees, blood pulling the area. This is gross. Um, I glance at the skull and see one glowing green eye from the skull, the human face completely peeled back. The monster lets out a noise that I could only describe as what can what complete chaos and insanity probably sounds like. I awaken screaming, crying, and sweating every single time. That's a dream I can never get used to. Yeah, I would not be able to either. Um, and then he says something about real life. So this, I guess, is real life. These series of nightmares die down for a while, but others pop up in place of them, but never truly as bad as them. Meanwhile, in the waking world, my dad dies. Oh, I'm very sorry to hear that. Um, I finish school. I move out. I get a job. I nearly die twice. I lose the job. I end up homeless. Oh my gosh. Man, this is a hard life. I mean, so many, so much bad happening all at once, it seems like. Um, I meet my current boyfriend and he gives me shelter, helps get me a good paying job, and with keeping me away from all the horrible people I was around. Well, I'm glad that that ended up happening like that for you. Um, I'm the happiest I've been in my entire life. Love to hear it. Um, I'm in a town, or I'm in a completely different town, than I was before and I'm going for a night jog. This town is very safe. Um, well, you think, but again, bad things happen in all places. Um, I see another chick. I hate that word. I see another chick waiting at a crosswalk, jogging in place, waiting for traffic to pass. I wave and ask her if she wants a jogging buddy because you can never be too safe at night. Very true. Um, she looks over at me and stops jogging in place. She's staring hard into my face and is probably starting to make me feel super uncomfortable, which I guess is only fair because she probably felt awkward about the whole situation. She then steps to me and grabs my left arm and looks at my hand. She gasps after spotting my thumb and starts backing away from me. My thumb is easy to notice as it's only half the size of my other one and is also missing a knuckle, basically a stub thumb. But why did she have to react like that? That's so rude. Um, whoa, this happened. To okay, hold on. I I'm like reading without you guys. Sorry. She starts jogging away and yells back at me. Morningstar is still looking for you. I can't be seen near you or I'll be in trouble. My heart sank. I pinched myself to make sure I'm actually awake and I am. So this random Okay, my mind is blown. This is no dream. I start chasing after her to try to get answers. How does she know me? Who is this Morningstar? What what does Morningstar want from me? 
how did I get all tied up into this? I continue to chase but lose her very quickly because I'm not very good with cardio. Um, I head home immediately and say nothing to anyone. Nothing else really happens that year except twice during my job. I had to be escorted from our assembly building to our manufacturing building by our warehouse guy because someone was spotted lurking around the area. I couldn't explain the sheer terror I had when those incidents happened. Then, just last year, Dream 4 happens. Um, burning church, black smoke filling the air. I'm on the outside just watching it burn. I'm crying. I'm hurt. I look around to see him, Morningstar, or the man I referred to as Morningstar. He approaches, hand stretched out to me. I grab his hand and instantly feel pain, seeing bone pushing into my skin from his hand, digging straight to my bones. The same transformation as before, the skull mere inches from my face, that glowing eye blinding me. The jaw opens, busted sharp teeth are visible and getting closer and closer i wake up screaming again and then real life um i have since received a promotion at my job yay snaps and claps bitch um and was able to buy my dream house with my boyfriend oh this is so good to hear because of all the struggles you finally got through them um i haven't seen that woman since that night jog and i don't know if it is a good or bad thing i sleep peacefully before the month of silence as i re recently started referring to it as i had the recurring dream before my dreams stopped altogether. I still have a sinking feeling every time I go visit my mother and when I go into town before work. I'm terrified of being alone in the dark now and just being alone in general. These nightmares have really fucked me up mentally and I feel hopeless against them. I feel like it's only a matter of time before they come back or worse, Morningstar comes back. I don't know if this Morningstar is real or if it's a person or group, but I know it's not someone pranking me because this is the first time I told anyone about these nightmares. Please help if you can. I'm so scared. I feel like I've heard the term Morningstar before. Isn't it like a cafe or something? No, that's like North Star Cafe, but what is Morningstar? It, it's some sort of company or brand, I feel like. Um, but honestly, again, dreams, sometimes we dream like our biggest fear because it, we're thinking about it. Some people think that you only dream something if you're thinking about it enough, like before you go to sleep or something. I don't really think that's always true just because, again, like, I told you guys my dream last night I wasn't dreaming or I wasn't thinking of flying to Barcelona or bowling or anything like that so I feel like in some cases it's true that you dream what you kind of are thinking of but then other times I don't think so so I feel like again this is probably just like a situation of like your inner fears maybe being brought out like maybe do you have like a fear of being chased type of thing or maybe you're watching something or playing a video game that has a, a monster in it like a a big monster that people are running from um it's definitely not an unheard thing to dream of though like an unheard concept so again maybe it's just coming from your subconscious mind that heard it or is seeing it in a movie, a video game type of thing, and then you just dream it. But the fact that you've had it for a long time now, like from I think 13, yeah, 13 to 14 is when it first started. Um, it's definitely significant, but I would just say to, you know, try to stop being afraid of the monster maybe. I don't think this person is going to actually watch this, uh, but just for anybody having a similar experience, you know. Um, Okay, so the next one is called A Haunted House with Many Rooms, and it is by user Clueless underscore Wonder. So, a similar post from about five years ago brought me to this page. When I realized the age of the post, I decided to join to see if anyone else had had a similar dream. Every so often, I will dream of a haunted house with many floors, each one being more haunted and having more intricate stairs as you go up. It kind of reminds me of the mystery house winchester mystery house where it's like a bunch of different rooms and like different staircases and stuff i think one of the the staircases in the house the woman that built the house um she had like arthritis or something like that so the stairs are very very like short like barely even stairs um but anyway the main problem being that it had a rule. Unless the spirits give permission, few have made it back from the fourth floor or passed it alive or return as husks of their former self. What does that mean? Um, 
Each floor would have something different going on, but it was a very old house. This dream has myself and my family mostly existing in the first two floors. My mom was encouraging me to go try another floor, but not wander too far. I get halfway up the stairs to the first floor and feel an overwhelming sense of doom, so I apologize for trespassing and ask them if they need anything or how I can repent for insulting them. I receive no response until I go back toward the third floor. A little girl who clearly carried her death appearance um, with her met me in a spare room and although spooked, I asked if I can help her at all. She points to a closet full of various toys and I hand her one before asking if she is okay with my family being here since we have nowhere else to go and promise to try very hard to take care of the house. She was still silent but didn't seem upset. I'd go between the first and third floor multiple times and sometimes the floors became different or the stairs would go from maze-like to having a parkour-ready appearance but never looked old, just incomplete sometimes. Mostly kept returning to my bedroom which was all white except an old bed and some arcade style games that I love. I do eventually get to the fourth floor and am shown amazing parts of the house, but when I want to show my mom, she blows it off and says how cool it is that I find all this stuff. Um, the feeling of doom becomes less the more I'm in there, and I sometimes chat with the ghosts or bring food for them and explain the taste. That's kind of cute, I feel like. Um, I am usually a child in these dreams as well. That childishness seemed to make a difference because many of the ghosts stopped seeing me as a threat but viewed me with caution. All of this in a dream every few days to every few months. Usually it progresses a bit, but not a lot. The house is an old Victorian style mansion. Everything on the first two or three floors are up to date. And as it goes up, it's easy to see that time almost stopped in these areas. Has anyone else seen a house like this? Many floors and rooms haunted, but not evil. Um, again, it doesn't fully remind me of the Winchester Mystery House, but like the, the different staircases, the different like rooms, like there will be like a doorway to a room except in the Winchester Mystery House it's it's just open and like if you walk into it you'd fall to your death. But yeah that concept is very intriguing. I feel like a haunted house with all these crazy rooms and stuff like that. It it, it almost feels like a maze type of situation. Um, but yeah the next one is called Haunted House Sweater Cult. A Nightmare I Had Last Night which obviously that sounds hella interesting. Um, and it's by user bit crushed bird call yep <laughs> and then it has a little note that says here's what i groggily typed into a note-taking app as soon as i woke up sorry for any errors um that is the best way to do it i know that it's annoying to say like you know oh you should have a dream journal if you have intricate dreams but genuinely i will forget a dream it could literally be the time of me getting up waking up going downstairs to use the bathroom and then I forget the dream. If you do not immediately write down your dream, at least in my case, I feel like I forget it a lot of the time. And if I say it out loud, I'll remember it, but if I don't, I could forget it so quickly. The dream started off with me and my family and dad's car driving somewhere. A car in front of us was swerving insanely from lane to lane, then suddenly did several 360s as it swung across several lanes and finally crashed into a parking lot. As I called 911, somehow dad ended up driving the wrong way on the highway and we barely survived from him literally jumping the car over the edge of the bridge. My goodness. When we got there, the police had already been called and all the victims in the car taken out. They all wore an identical sweater with some cryptic phrase knitted in colorful letters on the front along the lines of haunted house something something and it was almost anti-mimetic what is that anti-mimetic mm. and i forgot as soon as i looked away in the universe of the dream i had seen a nexpo video on this i don't know what that is and they were alleged to be some sort of cult I went to try to post to Reddit about this in your dream, <laughs> I'm dead, but I never got to finish making the post. One detail I included in the post was that the leaders of the cult were an old man and an old woman with white and ruby red hair, respectively. The lady tried to kill me. Whoa, that was a big jump in events. Um, I managed to fight her off. For some reason, I was transported into a hotel. It was super liminal. 
the halls seemed to go on forever with yellow wallpaper and endless white doors to an en to endless hotel rooms i opened one and saw some sort of abomination it was a woman's head with reddish orange hair attached to the end of a tree stump and the stump moved like a neck as it turned to look at me that is grody um, I made a hand gesture over my eyes to indicate that I hadn't seen this and wasn't going to tell a soul. I closed the door and ran off into the hall. At this point in my dream, I realized it was a dream, so I laid down on the floor and willed myself awake, picturing my bedroom. After a brief bout of sleep paralysis, I woke up. Ugh. Yeah, that's the scariest thing of all is having a dream like this, super scary, like, you know, even if it's just creepy, like um, the skeleton one, obviously you're scared, but it's more so just like, oh my gosh, I can't make sense of what this is. And then you have something like sleep paralysis or, where you, well, getting stuck in a dream is sleep paralysis, um, but like even lucid dreaming where you can control it, I feel like all those dream disorders are super scary to have along with a nightmare, obviously. All right, we have one more here and it is called This Dream Haunted Me For Years and it's by user affectionate underscore sale 683. I remember I had a nightmare about four to six years ago and it stuck with me for a while because of how detailed and intense it was. I hadn't thought of it for a while, but I got really interested in dreams again, so I wanted to share it. Also, it's not a reoccurring one if that means anything. Also, I don't remember how the dream started. As stated earlier, this was a while back and I'm not good at remembering things that clearly. Um, but I remember a specific scene, which is what I'll tell you now. The dream took place in this strange place. Think of a small wood platform connected to a city that has a ramp on the end, and said ramp leads out into the ocean with a second bridge nearby. Now imagine that the ocean was replaced with this gross, crusty-looking liquid. Ew. Like someone took burnt crust and liquefied enough of it to make an ocean, and said crusts were bubbling and sizzling. My goodness, that is very um, detailed. <laughs> Paints a picture for sure. I imagine if hell had a sewer, that was what it would look like. I don't remember it smelling, but I remembered that I didn't want to touch it at all. It was really quiet and I was standing there on a ra rickety platform in front of the ramp under some street lamp looking thing. This was the only light I remember being around as it took place at night and it was pitch black out so I couldn't see at all like I was in some sort of uh, void it was completely silent no hints of life anywhere and when I turned toward the city there were no lights on the place was almost completely lifeless that was one part of the dream the second part is what really stuck with me I remember hearing these horrible noises I'm not sure how to describe them to you imagine a demonic pig screaming and at a moose trying to roar <laughs> Again, the, the description that this person is giving is just unmatched. I think that's pretty close to what I was hearing. I looked towards the bridge that connected to the ramp and saw this massive pig fighting a moose. And it sounds stupid, but it was genuinely really scary to watch. Um, yeah, I, I'm not questioning that. The pig was trying to bite the moose's neck and it had really sharp teeth and the moose was screaming and they were both white whipping around and snapping at each other. And I remember getting closer like this cinematic thing and watching them. And I noticed that the pig's eyes were pure white. Since it was so dark, it had this grayscale look. Those eyes really stuck out. And the pig looked at me and I remember the way I froze, not exactly scared, but more shocked. And then the moose got free and stomped on the bridge, causing the section uh, with the pig to fall into the ocean. I don't remember what happened to the moose, but I remember I stepped even closer. I know I've said that this dream has really stuck with me, but this specific image I'm about to explain to you has drilled itself into my brain. I don't know how it took, but eventually the gross liquid, I don't even know what to call it, uh, started bubbling and boiling. When And then the pig resurfaced, and oh lord, it looked horrifying. Its eyes went from a glowing white to a blazing one, lighting up the liquid around it. It had this horrible grin on its face, teeth jagged, and its mouth oozing the burnt stuff. Who? this is gross. Why are all of these disgusting? Um, its ears sticking up, looking sharper, and the entirety of its body dripping with the liquid, which now that I think about it was more like an oil than anything else. It's putting a bad taste in my mouth. I don't even know why. 
Um, and it made this disgusting snarl sound as it swam over and began stalking its way up the ramp, dripping with the chunky oil substance, still boiling, still grinning, and I remember being scared out of my mind. I don't remember much else that happened in the dream, but I remember the strange feeling I woke up with, like my heart and stomach were simultaneously sinking. I got over it eventually and actually forgot about it for a bit until I went down dream memory lane. That's when I got the idea to share it. I still have no idea what the dream was caused by or what else happened in it, but I do know that it certainly stuck with me. It's one of the only dreams I can recount in this amount of detail and one of the few dreams I can actually remember, which is interesting considering how long ago it was and how quickly I usually forget my dreams. And even though a pig and moose fighting each other sounds stupid, at least to me it really stuck with me. And every time I envision it, I have this slight hint of an uneasiness. I mean, again, dude, you were the only one to actually see this happen in your head. So, I mean, we can all try to picture it, but dreams hit different. Like, they're, they're these little, like, movie scenes that take place in your head that you can never show anybody else. And we can, you know, listen and interpret it as best we can, but it's never going to be the same as it is in your own head. And so, yeah, stuff might sound stupid, but are super scary to you. Um, like, when I was a kid and I used to have a lot of nightmares um and by a lot I just mean like if I had watched something scary on YouTube or something like I've always been really into ghosts and paranormal and stuff but when I was a kid I was really actually afraid of it so I would watch like ghost stuff on YouTube but then I would have nightmares about it so that type of thing I would wake up in the night petrified not even able to like sleep by myself in a room anymore I'd have to go uh with my mom to be like hey I had a nightmare knock knock um move over that type of thing um but then as I like woke up I went to school like the day went on I would literally be like laughing at myself in the morning being so afraid of that but again your dreams are <laughs> some of them feel super real but even if they don't they're still happening in your head like you're seeing this you're watching it happen and that just amplifies all the the experience that you can tell over and over and over again like this happened that happened whatever but if you're not actually seeing it it it's a different experience um so yeah although these weren't very ghostly they were still very creepy so i'm gonna count it um as a a spooky episode and go ahead but a lot of these were just very like gory and gross um but i saved a bunch more um for like spooky dreams and hopefully they might be a little more spooky so let me know if you enjoyed this uh dreams are super interesting to me because again we don't know where they come from we don't know the reason all the time um so it, they're very unknown to us i feel like um so let me know if you enjoyed this type of episode and I'll definitely upload a part two and try to make sure that they're more, a, a little more ghostly instead of like gory. Um, but yeah, anyway, I will see you guys in my next episode. Um, make sure to submit your own personal spooky stories to allthingsghostlybusiness at gmail.com or I did make a Reddit page. Um, it's just like an all things ghostly Reddit page. I don't know Reddit too well so I don't know like the proper term but it's like a group page or a community page or whatever um where you can also write in stories um just feel free I'm looking for y'all's personal stories to do an episode on um so that will be typed out in the description below if you want to click the link to the reddit um and then also follow my tiktok which is all things ghostly podcast and my instagram is all things ghostly and subscribe if you're on youtube because why not don't you want to see all these episodes? <laughs> anyway, um, I've babbled on enough about these gory ass dreams. So I will see you in my next episode and I hope you guys have a great rest of your day or a great night if you're watching this at night. And yes, goodbye. <laughs>